All right, so this, of course, is the big story that we are tracking on Vyond at this hour. The U.S. midterm elections take place on Tuesday. After the 8th of November polls, U.S. President Joe Biden will find out whether he still has control over the U.S. Congress. The party has been bringing out their star campaigners, and they are hoping that the popular faces will, of course, bring, out, bring their supporters out to vote. On Sunday, Joe Biden once again emphasized that democracy itself was on the line in these midterm elections. Listen in to what he had to say. election isn't a referendum, it's a choice. Democracy is literally on the ballot. I've been making this case since I ran. You know, there are more than 300 Republican candidates for state, local, and federal office who are election deniers, who say that I did not win the election, even though the hundreds of uh, attempts to challenge that have all failed, even in Republican courts. The day before that, Joe Biden was joined by former President Barack Obama. Obama is still one of the most popular Democrat faces. He's reiterated Biden's warning, and he said that it is important that people across America, in fact, come out and vote for the right candidates. A fair economy that gives working people a fair shot. That's on the ballot. Fundamental rights are on the ballot. Truth and facts and logic and reason and basic decency are on the ballot. Democracy itself is on the ballot. The stakes are high. And other presidents were on the campaign trail as well. Bill Clinton, for instance, was campaigning in Nevada on Monday. Now, he was seen endorsing the Democrats' Senate candidate. And there was Donald Trump as well. He was campaigning in Florida, amongst other things. He spoke about the rise in Hispanic Republican supporters. Even the crazy New York Times today had a big piece about Hispanics coming to the Republican Party. And a lot of people say it's the Trump Party that they're coming to. I'm saying let it be the Republican Party. But you do like me. I know that. You do like me. Now, these elections, of course, will determine if Joe Biden and the Democrats keep control of the U.S. Congress, depending on how the Republicans, of course, fare. The midterms could set the stage for the return of Donald Trump. A poor showing from the Democrats could, of course, discourage Biden from running again in 2024. And as the present and the past presidents from both sides try to garner support for their party, the new owner of Twitter, Elon Musk, interestingly, seems to have jumped into the frame. Now, Elon Musk has urged American voters to back the Republican candidates. He said that since the presidency is democratic, voters should pick a Republican Congress. So the stage is now set. And in a matter of few hours, once the ballots are cast, there could be a shift in American politics. But which way will the Americans vote is still, of course, a big question. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what can, of course, be expected in these crucial midterm elections, we're joined in by our correspondent Susan Tehrani, who is joining us live from New York. And we also have our VOA correspondent, Jessica Stone, who is joining us live from Washington, D.C. Now, Susan, let, let me, in fact, begin by asking you this Ready? with respect to the latest development that has happened, where the world's richest man and also the man who's now got control of Twitter, Elon Musk, seems to be backing the Republican candidates. What more information do we have on this? So ultimately, Elon Musk is an influential individual, but he's also a, a private citizen that owns a company right now. Uh, and he's made no secret about, you know, which way he has swayed in recent months, uh, even on Twitter and social media. Uh, and I think at this point in time, you know, whether or not there is concern that he'll sway voters one way or the other uh, is 
sort of a little overstated, I think. Uh, an undecided voter right now uh, it will be very hard to find. I think Americans right now have made up their mind for the most part on the eve of the elections. Uh, but I think that uh, Elon Musk has been very clear on the positions that he has. And um, he's, uh, he's decided to take the route that he wants, just like anyone else. Leon with us. Meanwhile, we've still got Jessica Stone with us, and she's, of course, joining us from Washington, D.C. Jessica, this, of course, is a very crucial election, and Joe Biden, in, in his address, said that nothing less than the American ballot system, American democracy, is on the line when voters, of course, go into those polling stages mm -hmm. to elect their candidates in these midterm elections. The question that I want to ask you is, history shows that no sitting American president has been able to win in the midterm elections. Can Joe Biden go against this tide? It's very unlikely that he will break that. Um, his approval ratings are quite low. They're in the 40s, as most of the presidents who lost seats in the House and the Senate show throughout history, the one exception recently being George W. Bush uh, in, uh, in uh, one of the re-elections, the midterms during his presidency. And that has a lot to do with the, the way that the country came together after 9-11. Uh, but look, uh, the, the polls are showing, and, and keep in mind, we have about 40 million votes already cast in early voting. The polls are showing that the majority of those have been cast uh, by Democrats uh, and that Republicans are more likely to pick up more seats in the House and uh, the Senate. In fact, the Cook Political Report, which uh, does a lot of slicing and dicing of political information, uh, says that the best case scenario right now for the Democrats is to get a 50-50 Senate. So we are very likely looking at a change of power in the building behind me, the U.S. Capitol. Um, but that's not a sure bet, as you point out, until we count all of the votes. Absolutely indeed. Now, do continue to stay on with this because we've got a lot to discuss in terms of what could, of course, happen in these midterm elections. But, but the crucial aspect of it is, you know, this is an election that will be held on the 8th of November. And these are midterm elections. But how are midterm elections different from a general election? Our next poll gets you all the answers. Midterm elections in the United States take place at the halfway point of a presidential term. Election Day is the Tuesday following the first Monday in November. The elections decide who will control the U.S. Congress. All 435 seats are up for grabs in the House of Representatives. House members serve two-year terms. Approximately one-third of the 100-seat Senate is elected. Senators serve six-year overlapping terms. The results of the midterms can have a significant effect on the ability of the president to govern the country. Primary elections are held throughout the U.S. in the months leading up to the midterms. Voters select their preferred candidate from each party. He or she then goes forward to the main vote in November. 36 new state governors out of 50 are also elected. All right, so this is, of course, what is meant by midterm elections. And the question, of course, is will Joe Biden still be able to retain the majority and lead the nation as he's been able to do? Or will he end up losing his majority in the Senate? Now, to give us more details on this, we still have got Jessica Stone of VOA, who is with us from Washington, D.C. Now, Jessica, you know, for people who are looking at these elections from outside of the United States of America, there is a term that is used a lot called swing states. You know, tell us what, what these swing states are and which are these specific states within the United States in this election that are likely to be the swing states. Well, swing states in the United States are usually states that don't purely vote red, meaning Republican, or blue, meaning Democrat. And sometimes we also call them purple states as a result, because, of course, red and blue makes purple. Uh, and they're also very influential in the presidential race uh, when it comes to the size of the electoral votes that they command. But in a midterm election, we don't have electoral college votes. What we have are the popular vote uh, and the people that are going to the polls in order to elect senators, members of Congress, Congress and governors. And in this election, we are closely watching Ohio, 
Uh, Pennsylvania, very close race there between uh, two Senate candidates that are vying for uh, a retired Republican's seat. Uh, that is where you saw President Obama, President Trump, and sitting President Biden all campaign over the weekend because it is just that tight, and they need to turn out the vote. Uh, and midterms are historically low turnout by comparison to presidential elections because it's not as exciting when you don't have a presidential uh, position at, uh, uh, you know, in, in the offing uh, during the election. And so we tend to see lower numbers. And so it was really the desire of the former presidents and the current president to get more people to the polls in a very close election. So, yes, we're watching Pennsylvania. We're watching Georgia. Uh, that race is also very close. There's a sitting Democratic senator there who's a progressive uh, pastor uh, who's been in office for two years and has a record he can run on. And he is running uh, against a Republican former football star who is uh, surprisingly to some coming up hot and heavy behind him and is going to really test his ability to hold on to that seat. We're also watching Nevada uh, and Arizona. Arizona was a key state, if you remember, in the 2020 presidential election when Fox News called it for President Biden. Uh, that was a big turning point in people's uh, thoughts about who was going to win this race, because up until then we had had a lot of uh, Republican votes counted and not as many Democratic votes counted. Right. So uh, we don't see swing states in the same light as we see them in the presidency, uh, but we are closely watching about five key states for the Senate elections in particular. Absolutely indeed. Those five key states could, of course, go on to make a huge difference. Uh, do stay on with us, Jessica, and let me get in my colleague Susan Tehrani. Now, Susan, this, this of course, is in, in many ways a reflection of Joe Biden's presidency so far. This is pretty much the middle of his first presidency. And, you know, the question that a lot of people within America are asking is, has Joe Biden been able to improve their lives? Because in the aftermath of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the big issue, of course, has been the cost of living crisis. And this is something that people in America have also been dealing with. Has Joe Biden been able to address the cost of living crisis for the Americans well enough for the American people to back him in this midterm election? Yeah, that is the question uh, that many Americans are asking. And for what it's worth, usually uh, the midterms are a referendum on the sitting president. Even former President uh, Barack Obama back in 2010 when he was elected president uh, told his uh, White House counsel that he has about 18 months to two years to get what he needs to get done and get passed. After that, he will most likely uh, lose uh, that excitement uh, from the American people. Now, Joe Biden is no Barack Obama. Um, he's not as popular. His numbers aren't as popular. And we're really sitting uh, and seeing uh, in America right now where many believe is on a brink of uh, a recession. People are dealing with kitchen table issues. And when they go to the grocery store, they're scrambling for change. Uh, gas is an, as, at an all-time high. Uh, so when you ask a lot of uh, Americans, they say, no, our lives haven't uh, really improved. Uh, uh, and on the other hand, you know, others are wondering whether or not, uh, you know, the Republicans have a better plan or not. But at this point in time, they don't believe that the Democrats are the party that they hoped uh, would, first of all, bring the country together, what President Biden had hoped. I mean, his uh, speeches have been extremely divisive in recent uh, weeks and months, if you may want to argue. Uh, and secondly, I think um, just historically speaking, um, Americans are looking for an alternative right now. Now, what that alternative is, we'll have to wait and see. Absolutely, indeed. Very interesting that Americans are looking for an alternative. But do the American people actually have an alternative in front of them? Jessica, let me bring you in on this. Now, one of the individuals who's been very active in campaigning during these midterm elections has been the former American president, Donald Trump. It is not very clear whether he will be running for the presidency again in 2024, but... This is a crucial election for him as well, because if the candidates that have been backed by Donald Trump were to do really well, then that would mean that the position of Donald Trump to run for the presidency again from the Republican Party strengthens pretty dramatically, doesn't it? Yeah, he has certainly acted uh, like someone who is running for president. Uh, and we do have some reporting uh, that indicates he will announce 
that he will run for the presidency next Monday. Um, but that said, he definitely is waiting to watch and see how his, in quotes, candidates do. And some of those are doing very well. In the state of Ohio, for example, J.D. Vance, who is uh, someone who wrote about the kinds of voters that ultimately elected Donald Trump and is now running for the U.S. Senate seat that's there, uh, that is being vacated, um, he is doing quite well. And that's ex he's expected to pick up that Senate seat. Uh, and Ohio, of course, is a very important state when it comes to the presidential election. It's often what you call a swing state. It's often uh, a uh, in the coal mine, an indication of how the American electorate is going to vote. So, yes, President Trump is definitely watching uh, how all of these races play out. He also endorsed Herschel Walker, the football star who's running down uh, in Georgia on the Republican side. And uh, depending on how his candidates do that he has endorsed will also be an indication whether his endorsement has the same power that it had, uh, you know, during his presidency, because uh, that is something that will also give uh, us political observers an indication of how much sway does he still have with Republican voters or bringing people out that might uh, not even be registered in a party, which is something he did in 2016. But can he do it again in 2022? Can he do it in 2024? That's Those are the kinds of questions we're asking and we'll be asking of the data as we process it uh, after Election Day. Absolutely indeed. Jessica Stone and to Susan Tehrani, thank you very much indeed for joining us and getting us all those insights there. This, of course, is a big and a crucial election and we'll be tracking the updates as they unfold. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.